but it's still a challenge when we go into TV shows and the TV show want to set them up as they're standing. And I was like, yeah, but they dance. So for the beginning of this tour, the guys sat down uh, with uh, the show designers and the musical director, Keith Harris, and they decided that they wanted to rearrange all their music. They wanted to make it different from their Vegas show. I sat down with Keith and we discussed about re-recording all the tracks, um, every single part in isolation. I wanted all the kicks separated, every single snare, every single hit, every triangle hit. And so he's like, yeah, cool, no problem. So they brought in a uh, a string section, a brass section, everything is re-recorded. We've got about 150 plus tracks in the box, and that is a bus down to 64 Maddie tracks. So with all these separated tracks, they're un-EQ'd, unprocessed. We do all the processing on the console ourselves. The band did uh, complete takes, so it's a live band from start to finish in the studio. That's how we get such a live sound. Uh, even though we're using tracks, none of it's mastered, so we don't get squashed tracks coming to us that sound like they're being done and processed in the studio. We're getting the raw tracks. Myself and the monitor engineer, uh, we're creating the sound that we need to. And the band is essentially got that flow that a live band has. There's times when people can't tell that there's not a band there. They're like, where's the band? It's like, no, we don't have a band. Or it's like, oh yeah, the band's behind the screen. You can't see them. <laughs> So our playback engineer, Ramon Garnier, uh, he's responsible for sending all the tracks to us. Uh, it's a pretty big job, seeing as the, that's our band. Uh, he mans it pretty well. We've got an awesome playback rig. It's uh, for you. Um, everything's in for you uh, of rack space. And uh, there's two redundant systems, uh, two MacBook Pros, go into a bunch of very clever direct out audio gear that split the signal and we get it as um, 64 tracks. He runs everything at 48K, we upsample it to 96K. And it all goes into the stage rack, which is at monitors, our monitor engineer, Austin Schroeder. He sends me everything out to front of house, down uh, optical fiber lines, and that's our system. It all adds up to like 118 channels on the board. So there's quite a lot of things going on. We've got multiple talkback systems, audience mics. It's a fair amount of channels to handle. So there's quite a few challenges. We've got a, a B stage and the guys spend about 60 to 70% of the time in front of the PA. Apart from the choruses, there's usually only one or two guys singing at a time. So I've got three mics open and I've got girls screaming. Uh, they don't always stand with their mics up like this. Sometimes they're down in the audience. Uh, we went through extensive testing. Uh, with multiple different brands and different capsules and different mics and the 6k was our only choice the pattern of the 9235 caps is a dual diaphragm with an or well, hypercardioid uh, high end and a cardioid low end that's where the capsules really came into their own in maximum rejection to try and uh, keep mics from feeding back in front of the pa i've got waves pse which is a primary source expander it's a vocal centric gate basically you can set the threshold and set how much it's going to reduce the volume by once it closes. Uh, this is essential, especially with the metering, it's very easy to see what's their voice and what's the audience just by looking at the metering. Show me the meaning of being I've set this to a pretty tight threshold so that only when they sing do their mics open and uh, I've reduced the amount of gain by about 12 dB. Instead of being like on, off, on, off and hearing the mics cut in and cut out, it's only going down by 12 dB. But when I've got five mics or three mics doing that, it sounds really natural and you don't hear it cutting in and cutting out. There's five lead vocalists. It's not a single lead vocalist with a bunch of backing vocalists. And how do I treat the vocals? Do I treat them as individuals or do I treat them as a unit? And I came up with the conclusion that I'm going to treat this as a mixture. They all have uh, slightly different characteristics to their voice. 
and you want to definitely highlight each person's voice, but at the same time when they all sing together, you want to make sure that they sound like a vocal harmony group and they sound like one and not like, a, you know, a combination of five individual voices. I have an individual vocal chain on each guy and it pretty much consists of a, a PSE, which is the primary source expander by waves. So I'm using the onboard uh, EQ, the onboard compression, onboard DSA, and that's all part of each guy's individual vocal chain that goes into a vocal group. I'm using the Waves plugins. It's a C6 on the vocal group, into an LA2A, into a L3 limiter, and into an RS56. Uh, essentially what I'm trying to do is tighten all the vocals together and make them act as one. When you kind of put a lot of compression on vocals, it sometimes squeezes the life out, and RS56 does a great job at just putting the life back in. So the other aspect for myself when I started mixing these guys is knowing who sings which parts. And that was quite a challenge uh, because I didn't know the guys and I didn't know the parts. I basically ran off a script and after a while I learned who sang all the individual lead parts, but I still needed to know who sings what parts in the harmonies so that I could learn how to blend them as a unit. One of the main challenges from night to night is they don't sing exactly the same every night. They don't even sing the same within a song. You might get the perfect vocal blend in one chorus and then in the next chorus one guy is singing slightly louder because uh, he's about to sing his lead part and he's got a bit more energy or the other guy uh, is singing a little bit quieter because he's pulled his mic off from his face a little bit. Sending it through the vocal group and adding a lot of compression really helps. The other thing I did was um, I set up their vocals on my console from how they generally sing low to high. Kevin usually always takes the lower end of the harmonies and Howie always takes the higher end of the harmonies. On my console, I set up Kevin first, Nick, AJ, Brian, and then Howie. Over time, I, I learned exactly who sings which part, where, when, and how. But it's still a challenge when we go and do TV shows and the TV show want to set them up as they're standing. And I was like, yeah, but they dance. The moment they pick up their mics and they do a dance routine, then cameramen get all confused because it's like, oh, we've got the names in this order. And it's like, yeah, yeah, let's just do it how they sing, low to high. I'm anticipating how they're gonna sing. And uh, it's very much reading people. Like I've learned to read the crowd, I've learned to read the guys, know how they're feeling. And I'm an extension of, of them as a unit. However they are, delivering, I need to replicate that in the way that they want to replicate it, not in the way I or somebody else would want it. And I have learned over time exactly how they like it. The boys are very involved uh, in terms of what they want from a production aspect. In my case with the sound, uh, we have a game tape. Uh, it's a front of house perspective a video shot and then my board mix in the beginning part of the tour. Every night they would listen to it, send me notes, can you adjust this? Can you adjust this? I'd get input from the show directors, the production manager, uh, the musical director. We'd basically polish up, fix any little details that were, you know, bothering anybody until the product that we've got now. And uh, night after night, it's the same. One of the decisions I had to make when mixing this band was, do I mix for the audience? Uh, do I mix for audio files? I've always tend to lean towards a, an audience experience. I'm not so interested in getting a studio perfect mix. Uh, people don't come to live concerts to hear what it sounds like on a CD. They want to experience the show. And so but with the Backstreet Boys fans, they come to hear the boys. They want to hear every single one of their favorite Backstreet Boys in huge detail, soaring above everything else. And they want to hear them blended perfectly. And uh, so I focus on the vocals. I make sure that they're clear, precise, uh, mixed perfectly and then you know try and mix in energy with that it's not like I ignore everything else I just focus on the vocals so technical advice I'd say uh, listen to the music let the music speak let the song speak and and what part of the song speaks to you are you buying the fact that this person is saying what they're saying you know and if not can you add to that will production elements help sell the song. If it doesn't, then it's not important. If it's about the lyrics, make the vocals up front. If it's about, you know, energy, 
Let the bass, let the kick, let those elements shine. Listen to the audience. Uh, what does the audience want? What do they want to hear? What are people going to take away from the show? Let that move your mix as opposed to the technical aspects or trying to get it perfect. I learned a long time ago that trying to get a perfect mix in live is never going to happen. You've got to get the best mix that you can for that room. Don't fight the room. The room's always going to sound like that. Make it the best mix you can in that room. Focus on those elements. Let the room work with you.